Good morning, comrades. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Nubukrain. Welcome to a very different type of video and a video that many of you have been waiting for, the moment I've been waiting for ever since I kind of posted a screenshot of me playing a set of course at Competizione. And a lot of people ask the question, why are you blurring out the screen? Why are you playing Competizione? Because you're the Nürburgring kind of guy. Is the Nordschleife coming to the Nürburgring? Well, over the last couple of months, it was already unveiled that it would be available as a DLC on the 1st of April, which is today by the time this video gets released. And today I will be, I won't say playing it, driving it, because nowadays sim racing is not a game anymore. It's very close to realism. So it's a different kind of video. I'm intending on doing two laps to show you first the high level of detail of the actual game, the simulator. And then we will try to do a fast lap, but driver excuse, I'm not a sim driver. I'm not like a GT3 driver because we're gonna try to do a very fast thing. I'm gonna go very much over that, over the similarities. But first, since it's already a sim racing video, let me tell you about the sim that we, or I, and in the future we will be using the Novus X Motion. For people who are following my second channel, and if you're not, make sure to subscribe. You see me that over the last winter when I went to Croatia on holiday, we made a small stop in Slovenia to check out the sim. After which back then I said, after driving it, I need one. And here we are. So very short history. That's how much I loved it. The reason for that is because usually the motion on motion sims that I tried before is just there to cause all the drama and in this thing, it actually adds to the experience. So it's there not to like make feel as if you're like flying. It can make you fly because the actuators can provide one G of acceleration, deceleration within a second. There is a hundred millimeter of the, the travel and they can move 200 millimeters within a second, which causes one G of acceleration, deceleration. Anyway. That's regarding the motion. You'll see it separately on the ones we will be driving because we have quite a special camera set up here. But let's also talk about the other components that we have. Simicube Direct Drive Ultimate. It's the same that I have at my sim at home because I absolutely love it. I think it's the best out there. We have also Simicure steering wheel. And since we're talking about Simicube, we have something very special, namely the pedal. It's their active pedal. Now, how can it be active? It actually is simulating ABS. This means if you're breaking into ABS, it starts vibrating, just also like on the real car, you can feel that. And it can help you to understand, okay, I'm fully in ABS. Maybe I should reduce the braking if you want to start turning in. We're not gonna go too much into vehicle dynamics and into physics in today's lesson, children, maybe on some other occasion, but for the specifics, for the like really fine tuning of the driving technique, this is revolutionary. Anyway, you can check out in the video description all the specifics of the pedal. It is awesome, it works, it will help you to become a better, better driver. Then we have here also very important MME shifter. Now MME, their main business or activity is actually making shifters for the actual race cars. And then they started making sim equipment, so not the other way around. So, I mean, listen to the click. It's fantastic. So you can use it as a sequential gearbox, but since we already have pedals, uh, we just have this programmed as a H pattern. Hydraulic handbrake for all the skids. It's not allowed on the Nordschleife. I don't have a hydraulic handbrake in our M4 GT4 car, so I think, but for our application, if we want to do some rally driving, we can do some fun things. Speaking of which, the sim we'll be using for ourselves for practicing. We intend in the future to actually, for you guys to come in here, we can 3D scan your car and give you the file that you can put in in the game. I think it's something cool if you really want to have it in the set of Corsa, in the previous one, and I think this one supports. Maybe there are some other games in the future that will support it. For the rest, big screens. Big surround sound system, 5.1. Uh, I know that it has 4090 uh, RTX video card, so very fast. We can also, maybe Gio, we can use it as a, your editing rig and at the same time, oh, he's very happy. And that is kind of it. So, I mean, we have Sparco Evo XL seat. Okay, enough talking, let's hop in. We'll be driving the M3, sorry, M4 GT3. It does have the M4 GT4, but the F series from the last year, not the current one, not the G series. And this, the Valentino Rossi one, it also kind of has similar colors like our Bilstein one. So I think it fits perfectly. All right, let's get started. All right, here we go. I guess we are in uh, left and right hand drive car because how I usually have the camera set up on my onboards. 
As mentioned, we'll be doing two laps where I will be talking you, first of all, through the details that Assetto Corsa Competizione or Kunos has put into the Nordschleife DLC pack. Well, regarding the GP track, if you know my videos, I have no idea what's happening on GP track. That's the, also the part of the track where I lose most of the time on my actual real life laps because I, like, I'm kind of basic with it. What I can tell you is that so far it looks very, very, very good and detailed. Now, important thing what I already noticed, there are different tarmac sorts because the right part of the tarmac has been resurfaced, I think, two years ago uh, of the chicane and that's very impressive. The tarmac source, that's something that we will go into then later in more detail. Now, another part is sim racing is really not my thing. Um, so I'm sure like Jamie Broadband is gonna be doing something more specific when it comes to driving performance. I'm gonna specify more now on the actual um, details of the track. Another very important thing is since this is a SRO, um, homologation of the track, 24 hour version of the track. You do not have the NLS version of the track as far as I know. So if you're gonna be practicing on this track, uh, on the sim for yourself and then gonna be driving NLS, you might be missing a corner. Um, yeah, so keep that in mind. Well, everything looks quite all right here. Uh, big fan attack advertisement. I'm sure Jimmy will love that. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, we are almost, oh, Bernstein Corner. That's the only corner that I know on the track, the corner name of a GP track. There's also a Raveno Corner, who is also our sponsor for the, uh, this year for our Bernstein Racing program. All right, so one more chicane to go, and then we proceed on to the nice notch life uh, bit. So on the brakes at the sign 100, turning in. So yeah, there we go the Nordschleife, see how this looks like. So as mentioned, we're gonna be taking it easy first. What details are there? So we have here transition of the tarmac that has been done in, uh, I think one year ago. There was a very important point. There was a traffic light on the wall on the right and that, that something has been added on my consultation or request. Two kilometer sign turning into the right curb and then to the outside. The rumble strip is significantly wider than on the previous uh, Assetto Corsa, on Assetto Corsa 1. Everything looks nice here. Let me see on the right side. Yeah, the curb, the level of detail, the shadows, the, the curbs, the tarmac differences. Even here, the dirt, the dirt is completely identical. And also this tarmac patch that you see here is identical to the real thing. I should change, like try different uh, day times of the day to see how the shadows react but for now for 4 p.m. this looks pretty good depends also on the time of the year what time of 4 p.m. it is Flugplatz very important because this is the post 2015 Flugplatz because the previous Assetto Corsa was before that you still had the jump and after 2015 and 2016 they smoothened it out so now you can do it pretty much flat with a GT3 car something we would be doing later here on the right in Schwedenkreuz, you have like a green, I wouldn't say barrier, but it's a net to avoid spectators from standing there. And that has been added like two years ago. Also very small, tiny detail. Going towards Arenberg through Schwedenkreuz, high level of detail of curb stones. Let's downshift a bit. So now comes the difference, of course. This year there have been resurfacing works. The gravel has different color now, and also Foxhole is identical to previous season, so it's not the same as this year. So of course we're gonna have the new, or we're gonna here have the old curbstone. Also this tarmac patch is uh, 2023 season specific. It wasn't there before, it's also not there now. We can go over the curbstone and we can cry a bit while we do it from nostalgic feelings that it causes us. Um, the zebra, well, the, the pedestrian crossing is also there. The level of graffiti, also that on the outside of Adenau Forst, that you have the graffiti because that's where the cars are not driving during the dry days and therefore the graffiti is staying there. The rebel tree, but the vegetation, the amount of trees that you see now is phenomenal. Like the amount of trees is really identical to the actual real summer thing. 
All right, turning in to Colin Hart, Yokohama sign, Bernstein sign, motorcycle sign, on the brakes, turning in, right curb. The thing that I love the most, we'll see it later, actually like the rays of light that go uh, in Berkirk in specifics, or if you use like the, the morning uh, settings. Like, I don't know if the game is using ray tracing, but it's phenomenal. This, the tarmac transition that was done, I think, three years ago. Very small detail, can catch your car, car a lot off guard over there at the miss hit miss on the miss curb. It's a very small detail, but you feel it very much here in the car. And that would, can, like, if you don't know that it's there, it can bump you up and send you in a barrier. Small detail, very important. Nankang advertisement also was done specifically last year, and it is actually there. Very, very cool. This, is that Polish flag? Hmm, I think it is. Is it Polish or Monaco? Okay, you can uh, laugh at me in the comments. All right. Louder left, louder links, proceeding. There was like even a, a ladder that is actually very specific to that particular a house that's also there in real life. The toilets for the marshals. Okay, proceeding, climb through Kesselshin and close the towel. Another thing, the small piece of tarmac that was redone on the left side in this corner. You see it's a different color patch. I believe it was done last year or the year before that, but a very important detail, especially in the wet, that offers you more grip. Now, when I was in Italy uh, for the first demo version, I remember very important things. So here, they added a bit more curbstone based on my feedback. And most importantly, the trees here on the left uh, that creates a so-called umbrella effect. So during the wet racing, uh, you would have a dry patch or at least more dry patch than it would be in the wet and you have more grip. I need to try the wet driving in the ACC Nordschleife to see how the wet line actually compares how everything works. All right, the carousel. Da -da 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 -da, going in, staying in. The flags on the right, very well done. Very, very good. Okay, the climb to hole acht. Let's see if the fake grass is there. So on the right, you have a fake piece of grass. Yep, it's there, should never hit it. It's for me the biggest mystery of the Nürburgring. Who, why, I, I, like, was the guy who renovating the asphalt back in the days, like an avid golfer or tennis player and thought, oh, let's put a piece of grass here, a fake one. Why, what's the purpose? Makes zero sense. I mean, maybe it's like for drainage for water or something. Anyway, left curb, right curb, the Vipperman challenge. Um, very similar in real life. There might be a bit more dirt, although there is a lot more dirt now because of the, um, uh, the digitalization system installation. Right, so a left curb to the right side, running wide. Also a lot of dirt on the left, just like in the real thing. Turning in. And then we have also this curb is very important because it's different than what is on the first Assetto Corsa. Going over the curb towards the sign 169, the Marshall Post. Left curb, left curb. Brake, let go, brake, let go, turn in. Running white. The level of detail is phenomenal. A small rumble strip on the right. To the left, also like this uh, cone that we saw at Flans Garden Tree. Also there always in real life during racing for more aiming. The rumble strip on the left you can actually take. Lots of campings, lots of caravans during a 24 hour race. Amazing. Going to the right. On the brakes. All right, the mini carousel, the tarmac, the, the concrete plates, everything looks identical so so good and then here one thing that was different on the ac is the actual like the marshall post yeah the toilet that wasn't there i mean small details that you notice as a driver and then the most important thing i wouldn't say the most important thing but two years ago they've done the main straight was resurfaced the dirty so now, again, this is a big change towards the first 
Assetto Corsa uh, because now it's smoother. You can take it with a GT3 car flat, um, completely flat, high burst bridge, way ahead, flooring it, and yeah, going through the compression, turning in, flat, 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 and hard on the brakes. Okay. Okay, now as promised, the second lap I'll be doing a bit faster with Switched Off TC. I'm not going to include the GP track in this video because I absolutely suck at GP track. You can bash me, but that's going to be just an absolute massacre. So, going to be quiet, TC off. Let's see if we can do something.
we're back on the GP track where I have no idea what I'm doing. So I think that concludes it. What was the lap time? Like 8.39. I probably lost 20 seconds on the GP track. I've, oh, there's a ghost car, bye. In short, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My quick conclusion, the ACC Nordschleife uh, DLC, absolutely worth the money. Check out the link to the Steam uh, download page in the video description. The DLC is fantastic. The level of detail is, I would say, 98% correct because the 2% go to the new Foxhole in 2024, of course. So for 2023 season, it's perfect. If you want to learn the Nürburgring, the Nordschleife, this is the stuff you should get because the level of detail to every small curbstone, every small stone, every small piece of grass and flowers, fantastic. That's about the game. Regarding the sim, mind-blowing i mean that's the reason i mean you already know it because i've been there i tested it the first time i loved it and i said i need this because the level of detail is phenomenal the easy adaptation i still need, need to get used a bit to the haptic feedback of the of the simu cube pedal but everything else is really good the seating position is according and most importantly what i really hate usually about the motion sims is that they try to overcompensate on the motion and that just takes away from the driving experience it's only there to cause drama and this is definitely no drama well i hope not only you enjoyed the video i hope that productivity at vulcan alpha is not gonna drop because i believe a lot of us will be spending lots of time on this sim all right, well, on to the next one. If you want to see more sim videos, then we need to pay the electricity bill.